Up until a few months, choosing between Next.js and Gatsby was relatively simple. Need to make a static website like a blog for example where the content does not change too often? Cool, choose Gatsby. Need to build a website with server-side rendering? Like an e-commerce store with thousands of items? Great, go with Next.js. But there have been some recent updates that blur the line between these two frameworks, leaving developers just like you confused about which React framework to choose. So I'm going to tell you in this video how to make the right decision to build your next React project. Let's jump into it. What's up guys, this is Greg with Alta Class, helping you learn the right skills to land your dream job as a software engineer. If you are new to this channel, please consider subscribing. So you want to build a React application, but don't want to deal with routing, configuration, SEO, image optimization, or all the hard and cool stuff surrounding React. These features can be hard or can take a lot of time to implement on your own. Both Gatsby and Next.js offer those features out of the box, but they both have their own way of doing it. They are both popular React framework and each of them have their own strengths and weaknesses. So in this video, I'm going to give you some tips to help you choose between the two. But first, let's talk about why you should use a React framework instead of building a regular React application. You are probably familiar with Create React App, but if you have never heard of it, this is a tool from Facebook that you can use to generate a new single page React application. It gives you a modern build setup with no configuration. Thanks to it, you don't have to learn and configure any build tools and you can dive right into your code. It's pretty awesome because you just need to run one command line to get up and running. Beside that, you even have a basic folder structure to start from. Under the hood, Create React App uses tools like Webpack, Babel, ESLink, and other amazing projects to power your app. And it's hidden from you behind a single dependency, making it easier for you to focus on your application itself. So you may probably wonder, what's the problem with that? Well, with Create React App, you get a lot of configuration already in place for you and a folder structure for your application. So you don't have to worry about it. And in my opinion, Create React App is one of the easiest way to create a React application very quickly. And if you are new to React, this is probably the way to go. If you are just learning React, I would recommend starting with Create React App or building your React App by yourself from scratch and then moving into Create React App. But there are some problems with those single page React applications. And it's because they use client side rendering. With client side rendering, when you make a request, your browser downloads a bare HTML document and all the content is entirely rendered in the browser with JavaScript. Basically, all your application is sent down to your browser at the initial request. And then React handles everything on the browser, like fetching the data and rendering the views of your application depending on the routes the user is visiting. For example, with React, you have this HTML file with all your JavaScript dependencies and a single DOM element, which is the root of your application and nothing else. And then when the client requests a page of your website, your browser downloads that single blank HTML document, loads all the JavaScript included in necessary to run your website. And finally, React renders all your website contents by filling that HTML file. So the first problem we can see here with this mechanism is about speed and performance. Even if this kind of application is great because you don't have to refresh the entire page when having new data to display, the initial loading of your application can be pretty slow. Your visitors have to wait for the JavaScript bundle to load and for the browser to build the DOM before any content is visible. Your visitors may see a blank page or a loading spinner while all your JavaScript is loading. So that's one problem. The second problem that comes with client-side rendering is SEO. With client-side rendering applications, Google has to run all your JavaScript code before it knows what's on your website and how to index it. So it can take some time and delay your website ranking. And you don't even know if the Google web crawler will run your JavaScript the same way your browser is doing it. Furthermore, your barebones HTML document lacks the keyword description and social media metadata necessary for search engine optimization and for social media sharing. React doesn't do it for you out of the box. So you need something to help you with that as well. So one possible solution is server-side rendering. In contrast with traditional client-side rendering, in server-side rendering, HTML is generated and populated with all the necessary data on the server. This process produces static HTML that does not require JavaScript to run on the browser. 
In other words, your application will load much faster and will be attractive a lot sooner. You will also improve your SEO because search engines can more quickly, reliably, and accurately parse your content and meta tags. This is because the page content is immediately available to Googlebot or any other search engine scrollers. So server-side rendering addresses both concerns we have discussed so far with client-side rendering. But how do you enable server-side rendering? You can actually implement it on your own, but it's kind of a pain. Hopefully, both Gatsby and Next.js uses server-side rendering so you don't have to implement it yourself from scratch. It's handled out of the box for you by those two frameworks. So what does differentiate one from the other? They are both leveraging server-side rendering, but the way they do it is quite different. With Gatsby, all the HTML pages are generated in advance during the build phase and are sent simply once to the browser during runtime. Gatsby website contains only static files that can be hosted on any CDN or hosting providers like Netlify or AWS or anywhere else actually. Websites built with Gatsby are very fast by nature as they are already been rendered during compilation. This technique is actually called static site generation. Whereas with Next.js, HTML is rendered at runtime each time a client sends a request to the server. The way it actually works is pretty different from Gatsby. Next.js is running on a Node.js server and when it receives a request, it matches it with a specific page or a React component, requests the necessary data from an API or database or a CMS, waits for this data, and then generate the HTML based on the received data and the React component, and finally send it to the browser. But with Next.js, you can also choose if you like a specific page to be rendered to static HTML at build time, or use regular server-side rendering and generate HTML at runtime on each request. This is pretty powerful because you can use the best of both worlds, static style generation and server-side rendering inside the same framework. So you could build a website where you have, for example, the blog pages render at build time with static site generation and render more dynamic pages of your website using regular server-side rendering. So that's a considerable advantage for Next.js over Gatsby. But I'd like also to mention the difference in how you fetch your data with both frameworks. With Next.js, you can use any asynchronous or even synchronous data fetching technique like Fetch, REST, GraphQL, or even directly accessing a database. Next.js really doesn't care about how you do it. It's up to you. While Gatsby is much more opinionated about how you should do it. It is not required, but Gatsby recommends you and encourages you to use GraphQL as a best practice for structuring and writing your Gatsby website. So when building your app with Gatsby, you should access your data through GraphQL. But like Next.js, Gatsby can load data from anywhere, a CMS, a database, through an API or the file system. So that's something you should consider when choosing between these two frameworks. If you'd like to use something other than GraphQL to fetch your data, you better use Next.js. But keep in mind that GraphQL has become a popular alternative to REST for modern web applications. So you are probably already using it in your project but if you are not, working with Gatsby is an excellent opportunity to learn about this powerful technology. So question of the day for you, have you already used GraphQL to fetch your data before? If yes, I'd like to hear from you what application you have built with it. Let me know in the comment section below. And if you don't know anything about GraphQL, let me know if you want me to create a video about it. All right, let's keep going. Something else important you should consider between these two frameworks is the way you will host your applications. As we have seen, Gatsby only generates static files during compilation. So you can actually host your Gatsby website anywhere you want. On the other side, with Next.js, you get a Node.js server. So you have to host this Node server for your app to run. I believe the easiest way to do it is by using Versal, which has been made by the creators of Next.js. So it could be the fastest and easiest way to do it. Let me know in the comment section if you have already used Versal before but you can actually deploy your Next.js applications to any hosting providers that supports Node, like Heroku or Netlify, for example. So that's important. Remember that with Gatsby, you just get static content, which is actually cheaper to deploy than the Node.js server you get with Next.js. And it may be a bit easier, even if today you won't have any problem to host your Node.js server with all these great and amazing hosting providers. I'll give you the links to my favorite providers in the description below. 
So now, maybe that's what you have been waiting for. Let's talk about when to use which. We have seen so far that both frameworks leverages pre-rendering. Gatsby uses static site generation where the HTML is generated at build time and reused on each request. And next, JS lets you choose which pre-rendering technique you'd like to use for each page of your application. You can create an hybrid Next.js application with static site generation for most pages and using server-side rendering for others. But Gatsby gives you a nice and unified data layer out of the box. In Gatsby, you can use plugins to pull in data from any number of sources, like uh, an API or a CMS, and you can create all of that data with GraphQL throughout your application. This data layer simplifies the process of pulling data from different sources and providing them in your pages and components. On top of that, both frameworks add a ton of additional features to your React application. But Next.js is probably winning the game over Gatsby with its recent release. Now with Next.js, you get automatic image optimization, built-in internationalization, continuous analysis from real measurements, and you even have an all-in-one starter kit for e-commerce you can use and fully customize. Even if Gatsby is also providing some of these features, but not all of them, through its plugin system, we can clearly see that Next.js is becoming the best React framework for building actually anything you want. So in conclusion, I will still probably use Gatsby for building purely static website like a blog, for example, as it is an excellent framework to do it. And it has been designed from the very beginning to build this kind of website. And you have a vast community of people used to build static websites with Gatsby. And it may help sometimes. But if I have to build a web app that contains dynamic data or even a, an hybrid app that uses both static site generation and server side rendering, I will use and I will choose Next.js for sure. More and more of my applications are built with Next.js, but I'm still using Gatsby for static websites as I don't have to deal with Node. And I can use any CDN to build super fast websites. But what about Create React App? I don't really use it often anymore but I keep using it for teaching purposes or for building prototypes and small applications, for example. All right, that's it, guys. I hope you enjoyed this video and get a ton of value out of it. Please let me know in the comment section below which framework you will use for your next React project. I would be happy to hear from you. And don't forget to subscribe and ring that bell. Thank you so much for watching and I can't wait to see you in a future video. So y'all, snake eyes on dice for y'all.